As I mentioned in my video, what is a sea fortress or sea fort? A sea fortress was often built on a small island or reef, which was completely remodeled by construction works. It is actually a tiny scale version of geoengineering where human construction transforms the environment. Usually there are purposeful changes that makes the environment more productive like shoring up the rainwater supply on the island. This was done to secure drinking water for the sea fortress but had the extra effect of creating a fresh water environment for animals and plants. In other cases the changes were a side effect of how the sea fort was made that led to a profound environmental change. The walls of the sea fort, which would usually encircle the entire island, would keep both water and dirt from washing into the sea, thus keeping these resources on the island. Furthermore, the walls would give protection from the winds, allowing plants to grow behind them. The ecosystem of the island would thus retain far more of the resources that would otherwise be washed away simply because of the protective walls. The human population in the form of the garrison would also add greatly to resources of the island. The garrison would be supplied from outside but the waste would be thrown out at a garbage dump which would supply nutrients to both plants and animals. This also includes nutrient-rich human feces. The garrison would also often have some sort of vegetable garden within the walls and maybe some pigs to add a degree of self-sufficiency. This would add more plants and nourishment to the mix and even some trees might be brought in. Another addition would come from the birds that would have been the island's original inhabitants. Seabirds bring in large amount of fish feed which would normally be washed away on the barren island or reef but with the walls this would also be retained on the island. The freshwater ponds would also attract more birds and maybe even birds that are not seabirds. These can then bring seeds from plants on land that will find a spot of protection from the sea. This would further increase the biodiversity of the sea fortress. The supply ships will not only bring wanted animals and supplies but also a large number of vermin and other smaller animals that will make the sea fortress their home. Thus the human activity sparks the creation of an entire ecosystem that would otherwise not form on the small island chosen to become a sea fort. It is important to note that the formation of the ecosystem on the sea fortress is not the result of planning but a side effect of the building of the sea fort. All the activity and buildings simply bring so much more to the island than would otherwise be there and therefore the basis of a more advanced ecosystem is formed. The video that you see is from the Danish sea fort of Christiansø which is an excellent example of the ecological change that a sea fortress makes. As you will have noted, the island is quite green with many plants. These are not native as the sea fort is built on the largest and third largest reef in a group of reefs about 20 kilometers northeast of Bornholm in the Baltic Sea. The second largest reef, Grasholm, is still in its natural state, being home only to seabirds and seals. Christiansø, however, is both home to trees and even frogs in the ponds that also have water lilies. This change is completely due 
to the sea fort having been built and making a small oasis in the otherwise barren sea. Christiansø is still inhabited, but even uninhabited sea forts retain their changed environment as the walls and freshwater collection ponds are left on the island, making the new environment permanent. Sea forts are thus a good early example of profound environmental changes made by human activity, in this case where biological complexity is greatly increased by the presence of humans in the maritime environment, actually dragging a land-based biome into the sea.